Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia and I'm back with another Need for Speed video. I'm evolving the wrong engine videos I've been doing to include every type of build and therefore I'm changing the name of this series to You Are Using the Wrong Build. Today's video is all about the 63 Volkswagen Beetle. Let's go! Alright, before we get into the video, a lot of YouTubers spend time asking for subs and likes, but I like to do things a little bit differently and use this time to thank you for simply clicking on my video. I'm sure there are plenty of other Need for Speed videos you could have watched, so thanks for watching mine. Also, let's once again raise a barks to all the subscribers. Thanks again for watching another one of my videos, it literally means the world to me. Okay, if you haven't watched any of my engine videos before, the reason I make them is because when you swap to another engine, the game doesn't allow you to compare the different engine options in a fully built state with all Ultimate Plus parts before you buy it. Choosing an engine seems a little bit random, even though you could look at the base stats and kind of make an educated guess on that, but it's still not 100%. Not only that, but the engines are hundreds of thousands of dollars, so in an attempt to save you some money, I've bought every single engine for this 63 Beetle and proceeded to build each one with the highest tier parts possible, and then I repeatedly tested each engine on two different races and recorded the results to see which one was faster and more well-rounded. Now with this new series, I'm basically evolving the wrong engine videos I've been doing to include other ways to build the car in order to show different uses for it. For example, some cars in the game are terrible for track racing, but work very well for drag racing, drifting, or even off-road racing. What I plan to do is test different builds for each segment of racing and report back my results to you guys and give my opinion. Let's start with finding the fastest engine for the car, and then we can start testing it in drift, drag, and off-road applications. Just like the last engine video, I tested each engine with my standard track build, which is all Ultimate Plus parts, the dual turbo, and the 5x3 pound NOS option. Again, I know there's no real perfect way to test these engines, because some of the races are actually better for superchargers or single turbo setups, so keep that in mind, but honestly my tests are about as close as you're going to get. For those of you who are wondering why I'm using NOS during these tests, it's because that's how most of us race, and almost no one races without NOS, and I wanted the times and the results to most closely represent a real in-game race scenario. To balance the NOS for each motor, I used it on exactly the same parts of each race every single time. Consistency and accuracy were definitely my top two priorities, so I also ran each race two or more times to make sure that my driving skills weren't affecting the outcomes too much. If I had a bad lap, I went into the dirt or hit a barrier, I restarted the race immediately. I continued to do this until I ran three clean laps. Again, like the other videos, I only recorded the time if I had a super clean race, and no, the background game footage are not my tests. Alright, as of right now, the 63 Beetle has eight different motor options. Four flat fours, two inline fours, an inline six, and an inline three hybrid motor. Once again, if you simply selected the engine with the greatest potential horsepower, you will be misled. Not that horsepower is the only factor in speed, but I know it's a strategy that many people take when selecting an engine because it's the one metric that pretty much everyone can relate with and understand. The two motors with the highest potential horsepowers did not run the fastest times on either of the courses I tested them on. Let's start with the results on Arian. On this course, the 369 horsepower 1.5 liter inline 3 hybrid engine, man that's a mouthful. The inline 3 hybrid engine ran away with the win. It happened to be the last engine I tested, and I was thinking the whole time this engine might be the fastest because the hybrid engines in this game tend to put down very good power early in the RPMs, and with the help of a turbo they really don't lose too much on the top end. The Beetle's time is right up there with the RSR and the brand new McLaren F1. The fact that the time was so far ahead of the other engine offerings means we don't really need to talk about the other engines, so let's just look at where this time is ranked in my top 20 for the Arion. The Beetle actually takes the third fastest time, which is faster than the RSR, and lands 5 of its 8 engines in the top 20. It's actually super impressive considering the lack of horsepower and handling compared to its competition. The only thing I can think of is that this car weighs a significant amount less than some of the other fastest cars in the game. Alright, moving on. 
At Aardvark, the hybrid engine once again walked away with the victory with a time of 4 minutes, 36.2 seconds. It was a much closer race between it and the other seven engines, but it still wasn't close. The 362 horsepower 2.5 liter flat 4 was only 1.7 seconds behind it. It's pretty safe to say that the hybrid engine is the fastest engine for this car in a track application, but let's go ahead and look at the top 20 for Aardvark to see where it ranks. Well, it did manage to post two times in the top 20, which isn't too bad, but I think the raw power of the other cars is just too much to overcome in the long straightaway that Aardvark has. That straightaway is where I thought this car started to lag a little bit and wasn't quite as fast as some of the other cars in the game. Also, I'm not a fan of how this car handles at all. Even though the car is fast, it's very hard to control. It oversteers really easily and it feels super unstable compared to some of the other fast cars. Now, I didn't do anything with the live tuning because I wanted to keep my tests consistent with the other cars in the game, and I bet if I increased the downforce a little bit, I could maybe control the back end a little easier and maybe turn the steering down just a tiny bit so it doesn't oversteer so much. But for the tests, I really wanted to keep it consistent, so I left the live tuning alone specifically for this test. I'm not a huge fan of it in general racing on the track. I would much rather sacrifice a tiny bit of speed for something that's way more stable and easier to control. I think it would mean much more consistent and faster times in the long run. Okay, so now that we found the fastest engine for the car, let's take a look at how well rounded the 63 Beetle actually is by turning it into a drift car. First, let's make it look awesome because drift cars can't look stock. All right, so I tested a bunch of different builds and found out that none of them worked very well. Like literally the car is not meant to be a drift car, which kind of confused me because it's a rear wheel drive car, but I guess the engine is also in the back, so the weight distribution is not really set up to drift. That being said, I did find a build that was adequate and I was able to three star a couple drift events with it. So here it is. Using the hybrid engine, I put all Ultimate Plus parts with the dual turbo and 5 by 3 pound NOS. The parts that really mattered were the Pro Off-Road Suspension, the Elite Drift Tires, the Super Plus Gearbox, and the Pro Off-Road Differential. For some reason, this car drifts way better with the off-road parts than the drift parts. And I mixed it with a 6-speed gearbox. I'm not really sure why it drifts better like this, but it definitely is way easier to control and sustain long drifts with the off-road parts as opposed to the drift parts. All right, let's move on to the drag build. Now this is where the 63 Beetle really shines. I have not found a car that posts a faster quarter mile time outside of the new McLaren F1. This thing flies down the track in 8.3 seconds while the McLaren does an 8.27. The build looks like this. The hybrid engine with ultimate plus everything, the dual turbo and the 15 pound NOS bottle, the super track suspension, elite brakes and elite drag tires. And for the drivetrain, you want to go with the elite plus clutch, the elite seven speed gearbox and the super track differential. Now in a perfect situation, this build is what I would go with. But because the car does wheelies with this setup, it's super tough to run this in the wild with other drivers because it's impossible to line the car up perfectly straight every single time. And when you pop a wheelie and you're not straight, you'll start to drift into the other car's lane or possibly off the road, unless you just shut her down and try to regain your steering. So what I like to do is actually run the track tires instead. This allows me to NOS directly off the line and actually get down the track faster without worrying about crossing the middle line. With this setup, the car is literally unbeatable if both cars leave at the same time and you're using NOS. And again, with the exception of the McLaren F1, that thing is extremely fast off the line and gets down a quarter mile three hundredths of a second faster. If no NOS is allowed, then it's not quite as fast as the EVO 9. The EVO 9 has an advantage off the line with its all-wheel drive and it's just about as fast on the straightaway as the 63 Beetle. Anyway, this is where you could build this thing like a sleeper and then impress the heck out of anyone who doesn't know that the 63 Beetle is so fast in a straight line. It's probably the most OP drag car and sleeper drag car in the game. Moving on to our last category, off-road. The Beetle builds into a really nice fast off-road car. 
I'm using this Super Rally suspension, Elite Off-Road tires, and Super Rally differential. Everything else is the same as my track build. Also, for visual reasons, I lifted the suspension all the way up and took away the side skirts and added the little spoiler. I tested this car on two off-road races, HTV2 and Rumble. I posted times of 153.1 on HTV2 and 316.4 on Rumble. As time goes on, I'll do more off-road tests and I'll keep you updated on the fastest times for those two off-road races so that we can find the fastest off-road car in the game. So to summarize really quickly, the 63 Beetle is really good for drag and off-road racing. Its handling on the track makes it fast but super hard to control and not necessarily the best track car. And it's a pretty poor drift car. I really wouldn't use it for drifting. There are plenty of other options for drifting and I would recommend any of those any day of the week. Its old school look and feel makes it a great sleeper car and not too many players know about how fast this car really is. So go build one, customize it and go upset other players. All right, that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. And if you made it this far, you really are part of the militia. Until next time, trigger out.